We are back in Valakai, and things have changed because of us. Seeing the smoldering ruin of that church makes my heart weep. We have left a trail of destruction, yet all we have tried to do is the right thing. Lathander, I know it won't get any easier. Light the way as best as you can. I will follow. This is Red Moon Role Playing. You duck your heads as you enter the stables of the Blue Water Inn. You immediately notice that there is no one there, no stable boy, but all the places for the horses are open and no one's there to stop you. What do you do? Esmeralda, how long do you think we will need to rest these horses before we're ready to move on? It is still early in the day, yes? Hmm. With any luck, the road to the castle might be a little safer. After all, our wolf friends are now behind us. I'm not sure if they'll try and make their way through the forest to cut us around or give up for now. It's hard to tell, but um, I feel our horses will need at least an hour. Maybe half an hour at least. You know animals as well, don't you, Roshek? You agree, yes? Yeah, I think we should definitely let them rest for an hour. Get them some food and perhaps for ourselves as well. And I rub the inside of my legs, which are aching a little bit from the hard ride. Yes, agreed. Well, let us make it inside. If they are coming for us, they will come. And we will simply have to deal with that situation when it arises. We are surrounded by a city, after all. And, uh, I feel a little bit suspicious at the complete lack of people. A sudden burst of an idea of them closing all doors and setting torch to the place while we're inside pops up into my head, and I look out towards the outside. And uh, then I look into the inn from the side door. You notice the side door is actually closed, and when you go to it, you feel it's locked. But you do remember that this was a side door into the barn, and that the main entrance to the inn is actually on the other side of the building. Hmm. This is a bit weird, I think. And I uh, start moving around. And you move around, and Sure enough, find the main entrance open. And as you step forward, you peer in and you do not see many people at all. But you do inside notice that some torches are lit and you do actually see an individual at the bar moving around, polishing some glasses. Hmm. Good enough. And I start moving in. And you move into the inn, Roman. What do you do? I look to Esmeralda, and I suppose we should we should follow him, yes? Uh, the horses will surely be safe. If they wish to harm us, they would not come after the horses, surely. They have value. Yes, they'll be safe. And all three of you enter the inn. Esmeralda looks a little cautious. She's checking everywhere. But she nods to you. You don't see anybody about at this point other than the man at the bar who looks up and smiles he's a very large man very thickly built he's a very large thick beard you immediately notice as well Roshik that he does have a weapon at his side but it is holstered and currently he is just polishing a glass 
You also notice he has quite a healthy pallor to him, and has a few bright scarves about his person. Does he look like he knows what he's doing, or does he look like an imposter? Roll me an insight check, with disadvantage. So I roll first a 16 and then a 1. You take a moment to look him over, and can't help but feel that you're really happy to finally see a bartender who looks like a bartender. Yes, he's polishing the glass well, and he knows what he's doing, and you also notice him reaching for a bottle of wine behind the counter. You remember the bottles of wine they sell here. You also notice him give you a warm smile, and you think, good, finally someone who might give you a drink. He's perhaps the cheeriest barman you've seen here, other than, of course, Erwin and his wife, who were also quite pleasant. He's much better than that barman you would call from Barovia, with the dour expression. Ah. Uh. Finally. Finally someone who can handle a bar, and I go over. A cup of wine for me and my friends, if you please. Ah, of course, my friend. Of course. Welcome. Ah, good to get some fresh customers. We've only just taken over the place. Welcome. Welcome. My name is Luvash. Pleased to meet you. <laughs> nice to meet you as well, I say. And uh, I'll follow up with asking, do you have any uh, food getting ready? Oh, it is early in the day, but if you give us a moment, we can certainly fetch you some food. Yes, yes, yes. Roman, what are you doing now that uh, Roshik has gone to the bar and is getting some wine? You notice the man has already started pouring wine into the glasses for you both. I, um... Uh... Hmm, I study the situation. I try to determine if if this is some kind of trap. Is is it just a man operating a bar, or is this hmm, someone preparing to jump us? I I know not what to believe. It seems too good to be true. Roll me an insight check. Fourteen. He seems very pleased to see you. You're immediately taken in by the fact that his manner is very positive. You suddenly feel there's no way this man is Barovian. No, he's definitely not. He looks like a normal person, almost. He looks, in fact, very much like another sort of people you've met. You look around, though, and you can't see anyone. You are unsure. But for the moment, at least, uh, you outnumber this man, so what harm could he be, even though he is quite well built? Well, I feel safer with that thought, and um, I move up to my friend at the bar. Although I do not partake in any wine, I have not given that up yet. I will indulge, but not not until after we have met with the devil. Ah, right. I remember now. My happy priest friend here doesn't like mine as much as us normal folks. Would you pour him uh, something else, perhaps? What do you want, Roman? Oh, I am... I'm fine, brother. I, I'm fine to just get to sit down for a while and rest. Yes, you you enjoy the wine, and uh, I will try to rest up after this journey. We still have one remaining. Remember that. And do not overindulge. I, uh... Yeah, all right. As soon as the wine is poured, I, I have a, a large gulp as I... Uh, was uh, a bit disappointed yesterday that we were not able to celebrate after acquiring this fantastic artifact. And I uh, rub my knee a little bit where it, the armor has been chafing throughout the hard ride and uh, nod towards Esmeralda. And I say, at least you don't have this to worry about then. <laughs> indeed, indeed. She steps up to the bar and looks very carefully at the bartender. She says, 
Hail, friend. All respects to you and your caravan and your elder. And the man blinks a little and smiles. Ah, I'm not familiar with you, my dear. What caravan are you with? And she responds, I am no longer with a caravan. I travel alone these days. Still, always good to see a fellow of Astani. And he smiles and nods. Though he remarks, although I'm afraid there is no point in offering respect to our elder. Our elder passed away some time ago. I am the elder now of my caravan with my brother. And Esmeralda nods and smiles and looks about. And Roman, you notice some movement at the door. Some people are coming in. But they sound jovial, laughing with each other. Again, you see some people coming in with armour, weapons, but some men, some women, they seem in a good mood and they're moving to a table. The woman has long raven-like hair and a headscarf around it and the men have beards, some trim, some not, and again, seem very brightly dressed. They are going towards a table and getting out some cards. Hmm. Do I recognise any of them? Have we met with these Vistani before? You've met none of these ones before, no. Hmm. Well, it is not out of the ordinary. But I do uh, make sure that uh, Roshek has noted this as well. The fact that they are armed is um, something that needs to be observed. I uh, obviously note that people come in and I notice that they are armed as well. But I don't know. Maybe uh, there are new policies in the city now. Could well be. Either way, I'm just happy with a bit of drink and a bit of food. I wish we could stay a bit longer and seeing them play cards make me... Makes me want to dawdle about a little bit, but I, uh, I feel the blade at my side, and I feel its focus, and what it's drawing me towards, and I can't be bothered now to just hang about, drinking and playing things. I feel it's almost tugging at me. It wants to serve its purpose after all this time. The bartender leans forward and hands you a plate of food, which comes after about five minutes. It's not very good, Roshek. It's not very good. Basic cooked meat. But I suppose it's food. As he hands it over, he remarks, So, my friends, my friends, where are we off to today, eh? I start eating, and I remark that was quick. Uh, well, we're just passing through the town. We have some business to deal with on the other side. Oh, and what business would that be? <laughs> well, we're going to open up a, a, a farm... I say and I start laughing. <laughs> See if he gets the joke. He blinks at you a little. And laughs as well. A deep, throaty laugh. He actually smacks the table a few times. Ah, ah, open a farm in these lands. Oh, <laughs> very funny, half -orc. Very <laughs> funny indeed. What a uh. comedian. <laughs> open a farm, he says. Did you hear that, friends? And the table all look towards you and laugh as well. They are very amused by your joke. And I raise a glass to them. And they smile and nod their heads to you. Roman, you notice Esmeralda is looking a little agitated. She looks to the doors, which you notice have closed. But that would be the natural way they close. They do swing shut after all. And she's looking there and then at Roman, and she seems a little tense, but she's smiling. She's hiding it quite well. You don't think anyone else would have noticed, but you do with your insight, of course. Hmm. Yes, I I give her a quick look. Um, one of 
of understanding, trying to show her that I that I see the same thing and that I am also concerned about this situation. But for now, I I do nothing. I do not wish to hmm, make a situation out of this. There's a lot of armed people in here, and uh, well, we have a history with some of these people that is less than friendly. Let us not remind them of that, I, I think. And uh, I just keep on my guard, ready to strike if the need should arise. Are you eating or drinking or anything? No, I am not. I do not trust these people. I do not trust this place. I do not trust anything in Valakai because, well, how could I? I uh, look at you, noticing this, that you're not eating or anything, and uh, I think your what you're doing is sort of rubbing off on me a little bit. I don't like it. Uh, so uh, I uh, try to finish up eating as quickly as possible to be done here. Yes, um, well, I try to, um, do I know how much time has passed now? Ten, twenty minutes. Could you both make me a perception check, please? Roshek, make that a disadvantage. Eleven. Same here. Roshek, you're a little distracted, to be honest. You are trying to eat your food quickly, but you do glance around a little, and Roman, you do as well. You're pretty sure that you actually just saw some movement coming from inside the inn, you know, the doorways that lead to the kitchen and the uh, barrel place. You see some more men and women sort of inside the inn. They look quite similar to those in sitting at the table, and you see they're just sort of hanging around the doorways in the kitchen, but that does make sense. There must have been someone in the kitchen. And again... One or two on the stairs. What do you do? I, uh, and they're just hanging about there. Yes. All Vistani as well. If we were to hazard a guess, you'd say yes. I, uh, dry my food from my mouth with my arm and I say thank you. That was refreshing. I think we'll, uh, Soon be on our way now. Oh, on your way, yes, to uh, make a farm. Haha, <laughs> yes. Start plowing the land and growing the crops and all that. Very important business. Oh, come now. You are a fighter. I can see it from your weapon. Where are you really going today? Maybe I can offer some advice. Vistani are very good at fighting, after all. We know much of the ways of the warrior um at this because I'm not liking the situation mostly because of Roman and the way he's acting and also because of Esmeralda because they're so like that I uh, I bring out the sword and I uh, call forth the blade and you do so and it glows a bright radiant light in front of you and I say well it would seem that we are on some official business and that this friend of mine is being called to be used can you describe the manner in which you do this are you speaking conversationally or more aggressively I am uh, staring straight into the bartender's eyes and uh, saying it with a bit of a challenge, as if he does he wish to challenge this blade as well before it has served its purpose. Roll me an intimidation check. Fourteen. He looks you dead in the eyes and grins even wider. Ah, that is a fine weapon. But what business requires such a fine weapon as that? That sort of blade would easily kill most men. What are you hunting with it, hmm? I look at him. 
<sighs> as if he is a bit slow, to be honest. Well, we're going to kill the devil. Hmm. Yes, we all know that. Everyone knows that in these lands these days. And to be honest, well, really should be letting you go. But you understand how it is with family. Sometimes we really need to help our brothers and our sisters. You understand, don't you? What is your point? Esmeralda has risen from her seat and is reaching for her weapon. Roman, what are you doing? Hmm, yes. I as well do that. I stand up and I cast Death Ward on Esmeralda. I touch her shoulder. You must be ready now, sister. You lay your hand on her and she nods, a glow coming upon her just for a moment before vanishing into the ether. Yes. It has been good to speak to you, sir, but I believe we might need to go now. And she looks to you. Roshek, what do you do? I'm standing there, holding the blade in front of me, waiting and uh, reading his movements if he's uh, going to go for his weapon. And uh, I, I speak, yes. Friends, friends, come now, come now. I understand. Family, yes, we must take care of our family, but this is this is not a day that we wish to have end in such such mm, unfortunate circumstances as as well I can foresee happening here. No no, let us enjoy life this day. Enjoy your wine, enjoy the food. Be calm. Yes, let us all be calm, I say, and I cast calm emotions. And I'm aiming it specifically at the people close to the exit, hoping to get them to hmm, perhaps stand down, allow us to pass. That would be nice. And you spread your calming emotions all around you, and you notice everyone kind of look at you a little oddly and sort of relax a little. And the man laughs and nods and remarks, <laughs> It is true. It is a good day to drink and a good day to enjoy things. But, and he frowns as he looks at you, Roman, we don't all get to enjoy these things, do we? Those who are gone cannot do that. My sister, for example, she was murdered recently, would you believe, by bandits on the road. She will no longer sup wine or sing. Neither will her husband, in fact. Shame, no? Hmm. And I... Uh, I look at him. As it? Does he at all resemble the man that we met before? Very much so. Now you look closely. It's you again. I have been over this. With other Vistani, I did not want that to happen. I was forced by my current leader. If I could have it undone, I would. But now things are as they are. And I would ask that we find a truce somewhere in this. Or maybe I even help you with something to ease the pain. Though I understand that you would, of course, never be fully healed from losing a family member. But I offer you a life favour in return. You sense that many of the people watching you, you notice they have slowly come to circle you, are looking at you with some curiosity. Roman, you're not entirely sure, but you don't think maybe they would have been so curious if not for your spell. They do... You feel the effects are there. You could almost feel it yourself a little. A certain calming to this situation. Yes. Well, 
I say, realizing that this spell will not last forever. Well, uh, what say you, friends? Uh, how about we agree on that life favor, yes? And uh, we make our way out and you enjoy the, the wine, yes, the, the vineyard. It produces some truly fine wine. Yes, best enjoy it while it lasts. Roshek, roll me a perception check. Thirteen. You focus heavily on this man in front of you. You certainly do not notice anything else, but you do hear it when it happens. A crossbow bolt being fired, and you feel it for a moment, but it does not hit you. It hits almost directly into the bar, mere inches from your head. And when this happens, you notice that no one else seems to react very violently, after all. Everyone is calm. You even hear a calm voice call out. You wish to give a life favor, do you? Well, perhaps we can make a deal, then, friends. And you turn to see, up on the barrister, the man from before, his bolt weapon at the ready. But he did not shoot you in the head, Roshek. He certainly could have. What do you do? I, uh, open my arms, and I say, Come then, say what do you want to say. Luvash frowns a little, but seems to wait. He looks to his brother. Well, brother, they are heading to him anyway. Perhaps it's not worth getting into too much trouble. You are heading to fight the devil, yes? That's right. The other man jumps down from the balcony, landing on a table, quite skillfully, you note. He steps over to you. For a moment you see a flash of anger on his features, but then almost something seems to hold that back. This calming influence that seems to be everywhere. What exactly would you offer that could make up for the death and murder of our sister and her husband by your hand, indirectly or not, friend? I understand you are all allies of this devil. I mean, a lot of you. That was why we were fighting back then, wasn't it? I uh, didn't know of this at the point when that happened. Nor should it matter, because I didn't act of my own accord. But, I ask you this. Are you his friends, or are you his slaves? Aragal tilts his head at you. We are his allies. To a fashion, I suppose. We come and we go. He offers much. It does not ask for much in return, other than travellers like yourselves. But you are heading to him. If you are heading to him, we will not stop you doing that. Although, some people here might not be happy with this decision. But I will have something from you, Half-Orc, if you truly wish to honour your deal. You think you are free to do much and much things as you please? This is an illusion, I say. You think you are here, travelling back and out of this world because he lets you and that is a great boon? There is a much more freedom to be gained and much more good to be gained from this world than that. But what would you have me do? Your eye. Give me your left eye. Blood for blood, and a fine piece of you. Yes, my desire for vengeance will be satisfied then, and I will tell my brother to let you go. And the bigger man, sort of, again, looks a bit confused, but then nods. Roman, this is definitely going very well because of your spell. You can feel that. If this is going well, then I... Wouldn't want to, to see the opposite to that. 
Well, I look to Rorschach. It is his decision. I keep looking towards the door and towards Esmeralda also. Do I sense an opening? Esmeralda seemed a little tense, and she has drawn her thing, but believe it or not, she perhaps was also affected by your spell inadvertently. And she does then remark, It is quite a grim trade you offer him, but... Such a sacrifice, Rashek, is respected by my people. I believe they will keep their word. Although I'm not sure how much worth their word really is. And Luvash speaks up at this point. We are honest. You are heading to the devil. I will let you know now that is what he wants. He is expecting you. So who are we to stop you if you actually are going that way? But my brother does desire satisfaction. And I too will see satisfaction. You did after all, sir. Let our sister be brutally murdered. I uh, look between them all as they speak. And uh, to me it makes absolutely no sense whatever. Or what it could possibly help them in any way to be happy with having one of my eyes removed for them. And I know that this Madame Eva already asked for a lock of my hair for uh, some purpose. So maybe they have something connected to, I don't know, parts of the body. But uh, I, uh, I shake at my head... I shake my head disappointedly, thinking this is just foolishness, and I just start walking out of the tavern. I thought it would give me something serious to do. What would you have you do then, half-orc? What can you do to atone? I would set you all free, I say as I turn back towards them. Luvash laughs at this. Free from the grasp of this devil. Free from the grasp of the devil. My friend, you do not seem to understand the situation. We can come and go as we please. For offering our services to the lord of this land, we are rewarded with fortunes and powers. You offer us nothing other than inconvenience, and at this point, annoyance. Roman... Angers are starting to rise again. This is now no longer going well with Roshek's defiance of these people. What do you do? Mm, I... I sense this. I... I again try to calm the situation by casting calm emotions, and as they're speaking, I quickly follow that up with... with yes. I will not be able to convince the ones aggrieved by Roshek's action that we should be let go, but perhaps the others won't react. Perhaps it is a gamble. Uh, I cast silence upon those speaking, trying to quiet this conversation completely. Yes, we will just walk out. He can scream all he wants, and it is only him that we will have to worry about, not the entire room. And you cast your spell of silence. And instantly, there is silence. And you cast your spell of silence. And there is silence. Looks of confusion move all around as no one can be heard. And for the moment, there is merely confusion. You see Aragail trying to shout at you, Roshik, but he can say nothing. Luvash as well. This is the time I start uh, making a run for it. I, I, I pat Esmeralda and, and, and Roshik and just, this is the time we need to go. I can of course not say that, but I can show it. And what do you do immediately after that, Roman? I make for the door. And you make for the door and move to open it and find resistance. You try again. The door is not opening, Roman. Is uh, Roshik catching up with me as well? 
I uh, see you move to the door and not being able to get out. And uh, then I look at the crowd and I'm annoyed with having been silenced. Uh, I'm a bit unsure what to do. I am trying to force the door open. That is what you see me doing, trying to, to push it open. I am not a weak man. And you start struggling against the door. It's rather strange, though, because, of course, your spell of silence has silenced everything, even your own hearing. So you can't actually hear yourself struggling against the door. Everything's suddenly gone very strange, this aura of silence. Make me a strength check. I roll uh, 15 plus 3, 18. You smash into the door and you feel wood splinter and it starts to loosen. But as you force the door open, you can see just a little gap. What's happened? It's been barred from the outside. Roshek, what do you do? Everyone is looking at you now. Calm has faded. They are looking at you with anger. You see the large man Lavash point at you and his brother nod and get his crossbow ready. They are coming to kill you. What do you do? I uh, think to myself it is blood they want to get rid of this, then it is blood they shall have. And I lunge towards Urgyle. Everyone, roll initiative. I roll a six. Thirteen. Roshek, you charge into the fray, diving into these individuals as all eight fellow Vistani gather around Luvash and his brother Aragail to attack you. Esmeralda quickly darts off to the side and of course Roman, you are at the door trying to get it open. You notice Aragail dart away into the shadows. He seems to disappear from view for a moment. Could you roll me a perception check? 16. Despite his attempts to get away though into a corner of stealth, you Keep a good eye on him, Roman, and, well, Roshik as well, would call out. Or he would if he could make any sound, but he cannot. But he can still see that Aragal has not quite got into cover, but he was trying to. Roshik, it is your turn. What do you do? You have, directly in front of you, two men and women armed with short swords, ready for battle. I don't have time to think. I uh, go for an attack and uh, attack the closest ones. Roll your attack. And I charge in with my fiery, light, brightly burning blade, not thinking about what else I would do. So 15. That is a hit. Roll damage. 11. You swing forth your blade and instantly decapitate one person straight in front of you. Their head comes clean off as your burning blade sears their flesh. What is your next action? I twirl around to go for the person just next to him. Roll your attack. 15. And this time you drive your blade into their gut. You feel them scream in agony and pain as their entrails fly everywhere. Or rather, you feel the sensation of screaming. After all, everything is still completely silent. Do we have any more challenges nearby. The large one is still directly in front of you and two more are closing on your left. The other two seem to be trying to split up to head towards Roman and the other two as well. Then I do my bonus action to make an action surge leaping into this fray unhindered and I lunge straight towards the big Lovash. Excellent. Roll your attack. 19. Roll damage. 19. And you dart forward and catch a good gash in his left side. But he does manage to sort of parry a little. Withdrawing. You definitely got him, but he is a big man and will not fall as easily as the others. Is this the end of your turn? Yes. 
he responds. He snarls at you, or at least makes the expression of snarling, and flips out his knives, two of them, which he begins to try and stab you with. He strikes at you once, twice. You parry once, twice. But the final one, he does manage to just drive under your ribs. And he does... Six damage. Mm. As he barrels into you. <clears throat> and I feel it's a, it's a strange sensation of fighting in silence. It's almost as if you're losing direction in the room. But I try to keep focus. Indeed. Esmeralda is surrounded by two herself. She takes out her blade, her rapier, and starts to fence, parrying and blocking blows and then striking back. She manages to take down one with ease, and the other fails to do much damage to her for now. Two of them come to help Luvash against you, Roshak. But their attacks are nothing compared to your armor and your skills with a shield. They merely bounce off you. Although you can feel the impacts, they are angry. Two, meanwhile, come for you, Roman. Notice you trying to barge down the door. They come swinging their weapons at you. But one of them trips and stumbles, and the other, as he gets to you, is only met with your shield that you just about managed to bring up, despite trying to barge down the door. You are, again, safe for now. And it is now your turn, Roman. What do you do? I... You see me scream with frustration and anger, yet there is no sound. I shall strike at the men attacking me with my mace. I wish I could bring forth my spells, but I have so efficiently rendered them useless for now. I attack and I do a critical... Hit, I roll a 20. This man disappears in a bloody mess in front of you. Do not roll damage. Your mace cleaves his face, or rather, bludgeons his face into oblivion. What do you do next? Mm, there's not much else I can do. I, I try to take position close to my friends, if possible, trying to... Mm, if, if possible, protect them from um, attacks from the sides. Uh, moving closer to Roshik. Aragile swears a little, silently of course, and raises his crossbow to you, Roshik. You try and get ready to defend yourself, but unfortunately you are currently surrounded by three others in combat. This does mean his sneak attack will be successful. And he fires at you. And you feel a bolt hit into your shoulder. Roll me a constitution saves. You feel that familiar burning poison he is so fond of using. Oh, my jaws clenched together. 25. You grit your teeth. And you feel the poison burn through you. But you have felt it before. And its effects are not so bad. Still... He caught you straight in the shoulder. It is very painful. You take 20 damage. And you notice him firing again. But this time, the bolt whizzes past your head. It is your turn, Roshik. What do you do? You currently have Luvash right in your face, and two other people have now engaged you in combat. You're surrounded by at least three people. What do you do? My... Face twists in a s soundless snarl, and I, as I block the two other incoming attackers with my shield, I follow up with an attack at one of them. Roll your attack. Twenty. Roll damage. And uh, I'm going to turn that into a pushing attack, getting him away from me with extra force. And they're following up with the shield as well. So it's 10 damage. 
Yes. You barrel forward with your shield and swing it hard into this guy's side. The force lifts him off the ground. You do more than push him out of the way, you send him flying into a table which smashes, splintering everywhere. The splinters go through his chest and through his skull. He is very dead. And I make, I make that motion turning around to a swing at the other who engaged me as well. I do not wish to be distracted by all these bodies on the battlefield. Roll your attack. 25. Roll damage. That's 9 damage. You strike hard and true, but this time you don't quite finish this opponent. You give him a massive gash down the side. He's bleeding heavily, but he is still standing. And uh, as I do that, I'm going to use my bonus action, as I am now a shield master, to try and shove at the great Slovash and knock him prone with my shield. Roll what you need to roll. So I make an athletics check contested by him, his athletics or acrobatics check. He contests your action and gets an eight. And uh, I roll a 19. And you barge forward and knock him prone. He falls to the ground in front of you. A look of anguish and surprise on his features at suddenly having been bowled to the ground. And that's the end of my turn. Luvash looks at you with a element of anger and annoyance. He scrambles to get to his feet, and he manages to do so, stumbling a little. But unfortunately, that is the end of his turn. Esmeralda, meanwhile, quickly drives her rapier through her remaining foe, and he falls. The battle is going in your favour. The one facing you, Roshek, you notice, frown a little, and attempt to disengage. What do you do? Well, I don't care about him. I'm, I'll, uh, I'll let him go if he's not fighting anymore. Very well. He disengages successfully and moves to the back of the bar, heading in the opposite direction to the main doors. Roman, it is your go. Only Luvash remains, having just stood up, and Aragile, the furthest away from the battle, but looking around and just eyeing you with pure hatred. Well, uh, can I reach Aragile if I move towards him, if I use my movement and uh, strike at him within this turn? Yes, you can, but you will need to move into his melee range. I will do that. I'm going to challenge him one on one. And uh, yes, I move up with my shield ready. And I move to strike at him with my mace. I aim to make a nice red smoke of his head if I can. I am very tired of this man. Very well. Roll your attack. 20. Roll damage. 7. And you charge forwards and smash your mace harder to his side. But he is a very dexterous opponent. He manages to dodge. You do catch him a little though, grazing his arm quite painfully looking. Aragile looks at you, Roman looks to Roshek, spits on the ground, and attempts to disengage from you. What do you do, Roman? I will not let him get away again. No. He stays here. I strike at him. Roll your attack. Mm, this one fares less well. Nine. No, he's too quick for you. He manages to dodge your blow before tumbling backwards and making for the same exit the other man left from. Moving away and out of view for now. Roshek, your turn. Everyone has gone, except Luvash, who stands before you. He is noticing everyone retreating, and probably would be trying to retreat himself, you think. But what do you do? It's time to finish these off. We can't have them contesting our every next turn. 
even after what happens when we fight the devil, I uh, aim to finish him off with a fainting attack where I first turn as if I was about to attack, go for his brother, but then swing about hard with my sword. Wonderful. Roll your attack. Okay, it's a 16. And just as you do this feint, you rush forward, but find your blow parried. Somehow he manages to get his knife just in the way quick enough to sort of repel you. This attack did not hit. What is your next move? I smile and think to myself that I have him now, and uh, I go for a tripping attack. Knock him down once again, but this time with a sword aiming at his legs. And that's 19. Roll damage. 14. He falls before you, taking the blow solidly in the side before collapsing to the ground below you. Livash looks at you from the ground, spits, and closes his eyes. He has failed. He is ready for you to finish him. Esmeralda sort of steps over for a moment, but frowns and looks to where the others have just been retreating and uses her mover to kind of run in that direction. She looks anxious. Could you roll me both perception checks? Roshek, make yours at disadvantage. Eight. Eleven. Roman, your attention is on the door. You're pretty sure that the other fellow who ran away a bit earlier must be outside by now. Maybe there's another way out that way. You're not sure what's happened to Arakyle. Roshek, you look proud as you feel a surge of victory. You have won this battle. You can now finish this individual. That is, however, Roman's go. What do you do, Roman? I uh, move after Esmeralda, trying to find a way out. And also keeping a lookout for the Saragile. He might be trying to make his way back to help hmm, the man left behind, to help Luvash. So, uh, yes. I move slowly, keeping an eye out for possible threats. Indeed, and you do. And you don't see any. You move quickly. And you come to the back of the bar, and just a few feet before you, you can see an open doorway leading into the stable, and individuals running towards it. In fact, you notice Aragile turn, look at you, swear something again, but no sound comes out of course, and run to that door before slamming it shut behind him. Roshik, it is your go. You are standing above your defeated opponent. What do you do? Proud to have won this fair fight, but with my new weapon, feeling it now as an extension of my arm, I drive the tip of it straight through his heart to finish him off. And you do so. He gives a final guttural spark of life. He seems to be trying to say something, but of course, his words... Are meaningless. And then I pull it out hard to run after the others. And you do. And as you do, you notice something. You obviously don't hear it, but you smell it. Burning. Something's burning. I think to myself, perfect. Just what I expected from the start. And I, I try to put on some extra tempo to just get out of there and follow them out. Esmeralda barges forwards, going for that door that, just as it slams shut, you immediately notice that you are now out of the range of the silence spell, and sound returns. The door does not open immediately, though. It seems she is also encountering resistance, and she rolls into the door, but... She's not able to. She kind of winces a little as she hits the door at a bad angle. 
you hear some commotion from outside. Now you notice, Roman, there's a lot of commotion outside. A lot of shouting. And that's when you see, at this doorway, flames appear. Or rather, they seem to be appearing just behind the door. You see smoke now coming in. What do you do? It is your go. This uh, building, is it of stone? Large portions of it, yes. But there's also, of course, tons of wood everywhere. Bannisters of wood, foundation wood. All the bar is full of wood and wooden tables and wooden banisters. But yes, there is also a lot of stone. Would the walls, perhaps, be made of stone? Yes. Yes, they are. Excellent. I... Seeing as how the door is barred again, yet again, a door is barring our exit from this godforsaken inn. But this time, no walls, no doors, nothing will stop us. I... Having finally exited this zone of silence that I created, I whisper the words and I touch the wall. I pray to to Lathander and I pray, yes, to the to the other gods to help open this wall up, to make a passage through it, to let us leave. And I cast stone shape and I open a five feet shape through this wall a passage indeed you do and before you the wall opens into a passage leading directly into the stables as this doorway opens hay and bits of wood fall directly in and the passage is now open come I scream let's go Roshek you turn for a moment just to look behind you and see what that burning was and see the full interior of the inn, from the doorways at least, is ablaze. You quickly look up and see that the few windows that were initially barred somehow have been pried open and lanterns have been thrown in. Multiple lanterns, multiple torches. What do you do? I curse and I run after to find this hole in the wall and without hesitation, just jump through it and f see if my horse is out there. You do, and you're out in the open. You immediately look to your right and see more torches at the door leading into the stable, lighting the stable on fire. The hay, of course, and the wood is catching quickly. But you do see your horses panicking a little, but they have been left where they were. Looking around very quickly as well, you just about think you can see some people scrambling away. But, well, you'll have to choose. Go after them or save your horses. Hmm. I uh, shout to Roman to get the horses, and then I run after them. I, I yell back, "Yes, I will do that. Kill them for me, will you?" Esmeralda comes to aid you, Roman, coming out into the open. The heat is close, but you have got out of the inn. You don't know how long it will take to burn, but. At least you're not in it. The horses are panicking, however. What do you do? I start leading them out, trying to calm them, trying to get out of the stable and onto the streets, getting ready for our escape from Valakai. Yet again, escaping from Valakai. Indeed. And as you do, you come out of the stables, seeing the front of the building now ablaze. And of course, in front of it now, the mob of twenty individuals, all in dark hooded cloaks, with a few guards nearby, and Ernest himself. They all have a few torches held up, and Ernest looks at you with a surprised expression on his face. Roshik, meanwhile, darting after the individuals you found just leaving, you find yourself on the streets of Valakai. One individual is nearby, Aragile, a good distance ahead of you. He's a fast runner. What do you do? I, uh, I run to pursue Aragile. Roll me an athletics check. 25. You run after him, darting down the street, very quickly leaving behind Roman in the inn. He tries to duck into an alleyway, but you 
catch up with him quickly. Adrenaline is upon you, and you find yourself within reach of him. He turns and spits at you. God damn you, half orc! You son of a whore! And I leap up into the air to bring my burning sword right down on him. Roll your attack. Natural 20. Roll your critical. 28. You dive after Aragile and you drive your blade directly into his back, forcing him down to the ground as he bleeds before you. I say to him, I'm sorry we couldn't have finished this another way. And I do my other attack at him. Roll that. And I roll 15. That's a hit. Roll damage. 13. He spits blood directly in your face as you then respond by smashing your blade hilt directly into his face. He stumbles back, half his face a bloody mess. He spits again, draws his blades. <sighs> and so I will die. But I may not avenge my brethren. But at least you'll always be a killer. A eh, half orc. Always a stinking bandit and murderer. And he tries to throw his blades into your face. And one goes wise, but the other slashes into your chest and he sort of tries to stab Dow directly into your heart. He does not hit your heart, but you do need to roll a constitution save. 21. Take 17 damage as this blade directly pierces your upper chest. He looks at you. Blood half in his face, already starting to slump. You see no fear, only anger and a smile as he simply says, Good luck killing the devil. Good luck. <laughs> what do you do? I snarl in pain from the poison and I bring up my last strength to make another fainting attack trying to keep my speed and my grace and I roll 20 not naturally but 20 tell me how you finish him for this will finish him I uh, scream in pain at the poison and I swoop around as if to barge at him with my shield but just short of him so that when he jumps back to avoid I follow up with a straight pierce of my blade leaning it against the weight of the f shield against the rim of the shield and piercing it straight through his heart as well and it goes through his heart and he gurgles and he slumps slowly falling to the side of the road. What do you do? I, uh, see him dead. I just stand there, breathing heavily after this enormous exertion. And I, uh, try to draw upon my second wind to regain some strength. You do. Do you notice him watching you for a while? Well... With dead eyes now. You find yourself, once again, just remembering her face. Remembering how she pleaded. They had done nothing to you, after all, Roshek. They were simply marks on the road. A good target. But they had to die. At least, that's what your leader said. Vistani curses are bad. And she definitely cursed you with her dying words. And I think about the encounter with Madame Eva. How she relieved me of the curse. I'm forgiven by their people. And this was the only way her brothers could truly rest as well. I can leave this behind me now. I can leave this, and they will all rest 
in whatever bloody hell they choose. Roman. Your horses are ready. Although right in front of you right now is a very large mob. They are looking at you with expressions of fear. Expressions of horror. They are all backing away a little. Even the soldiers. Ernst sort of gives you a weird look. And shrugs. And remarks. Just following orders, eh? Yes, of course, we all have uh, orders to follow, I say, and I make the movements and I cast Calm Emotions with a level 3 spell on the crowd and on Ernst. Of course, rest. You have done your part now. It is over, and uh, we will simply do what we said we would do. We will leave your fair city behind, and you will let us leave, of course, yes, and we will not come back to bother you, because you will not bother us, and, and everyone will go their merry way. Yes, yes, the future is bright. And I start moving forward together with Esmeralda. What do they do? Esmeralda mounts on her horse and sort of looks to the right, clearly concerned for where Roshik has run off to. The crowd lower their torches and all just start dispersing quickly. Well, maybe not too quickly. You calmed their fear, it seems. But they're still looking at you. You catch a few glances. The fear's gone. You've calmed it. Now it's just simply replaced with indifference and hatred. They all hate you, Roman. Every single one of them hates you. You feel this very strongly, even smiling, earnest. He does back away, though. Of course. Uh, no trouble. You are too strong for us. You've already killed so many of our people. We do not wish for you to kill any more. Just leave our town be, yes? Leave our town be. Go. We won't stop you. Just go. Harbingers of doom. <laughs> That's what they call you, no? Not my words. Their words. Hmm. Very well. Very well. We will leave. We will leave. And we will not bother you again. Do not worry about that. Go with the light of Lathander. The Morning Lord smiles upon you, my brothers and sisters. I say smiling and, uh, and turn my back to them, moving away. You hear Ernst laugh a little at this and move away. The streets are emptying. There's no one here. Roshik, what are you doing? I'm coming, walking back to them. The blade having been returned to its scabbard. Ah, and I... Uh, I have caught my breath now, but I am very bloody down. My armour is soaked. And uh, I uh, look at Roman and I say, it's finished. But bloody hell, if this was supposed to have been a rest. The worst is yet to come, my brother. This is only the beginning. What awaits us is much greater. And won't be this easy. But at least you have two eyes. That is something to celebrate, yes? <laughs> I bellow hard, a big laugh. Yes, <laughs> yes, celebrate. But, oh, oh, I could use to sit down. Yes, let us make that sit down somewhere outside the city walls, shall we? I do not wish to wait for Lady Wachta to find out about what happened here. She may get other ideas. Fine. Esmeralda nods. She doesn't seem at all amused by any of this, you notice, Roshek. In fact, you notice she's looking quite annoyed at both of you. 
She gets on her horse and spurs it, remarking to you quickly, Come, we go now. I uh, pass my lips and I nod, and I just get up on my horse to follow along. And I follow as well, looking back at the city, looking back at the church, and looking back at the the blue water in, in flames. Indeed. You see the sign fall to the ground at this point. Your refuge is no more. Destroyed, like everything else in this city. Once again, we leave it in flames. Let's never get back here, if we can afford it. Yes, let's never come back. I agree. On to the castle. On to the devil. And you ride to the gates of the town which you see are open for you, and ride beyond them and see a soldier closing the gates behind you. You look to the sky. A storm is coming. It is almost as dark as night, even though surely it must still only now be maybe one or two o'clock in the middle of the day. You ride in silence for a moment. Esmeralda does turn to you, Roman, at one point and simply remark, Perhaps it's none of my business. But what in the nine hells did you do to those people? To those people? You mean why they had so much anger towards us? That is your question? Yes. I'm sure that not everyone is our ally. But they all were looking at you with such hatred. And what is this about the Vistani? I know not all Vistani are trustworthy, but she looks at you, Roshek. But what was this they said about you murdering? Who did you murder? Is that true? Yes, it is true. It's nothing I'm proud of. The leader of my former group would have two Vistani that we had relieved of their valuables. He would see them dead. I objected to this, as they were defenceless, and as we had already gotten what we needed. But... I couldn't oppose him, and, uh... I uh, look away as I say this. Uh, I made it happen. Esmeralda perhaps looks a little disappointed in you, Roshek. But she nods. She shrugs. I suppose... The paths of repentance are many. But I am upset to hear this, Roshek. I thought better of you, then. What, you were abandoned once. And she spits a little on the ground. I, uh... Wipe a bit of blood off the side of my cheek. Yeah. Yeah. A bandit. And you, Roman. Yes, my question. What's the answer? Hmm. Well, we encountered some of these fine folk traveling. They were um, accosting a man, assaulting him. We stopped the incident and blood was spilled. It was unfortunate. And... Um, they carried the grievances uh, onward, it seems. It's... Uh... Roshek! Could you tell Roman that I'm not talking about the incident that I was at myself? I'm talking about the people of the town, Roman. Do not use your fancy words on me. I thought we were allies. Talk to me plainly, please. What he's trying to say is that when we were going to leave this... T- when we were going to leave Valakai the first time, we couldn't do so without violence. They wouldn't let us go. And uh, so, we were forced to fight the captain of the guard. I don't know why they wouldn't let us go. They wanted to keep us for some sort of festival, which was ridiculous because of the mission that we were already on. But that's how it was. And as we killed this captain just to make our own exit it seems like there was a big shift in power 
the mayor having his captain killed was hanged along with his rest of the family the church was burnt down and there was a shift in what faction would take over the town I don't know what they say about us now but surely even though we indirectly and inadvertently help them take over they're probably saying nothing but bad things anyway I did not reflect upon it that way I thought ultimately we empowered them we are the reason that they are in in power here and yes there was certainly some destruction but it was not caused by us well not except for that bit about the captain but he was no friend of theirs yes that is correct that is also something that happened she looks at you very carefully Roman sometimes it's very easy to say that you have no other choice in matters to be honest is it a surprise that the thing that's bothering me most, Roman, is how you can tell me all this and not even sound slightly regretful at all? And she looks a little sad and then turns away and just starts riding. What do you do? I guess I don't regret it. I guess I really don't. It's odd that after everything that we've been through, after everyone we've killed. This just seems like... This just seems like nothing now. We have something so important to do and these people are standing in our way. Why can't they just let us move? Why can't they not just let us free them and bring light to this land? We are on a holy journey, a holy crusade. Who are they to stand in the way of that? Lathander is commanding us to do this. I'm on a holy mission from my god. I just shake my head. Roshek, as Bredalda is quiet now, just leading the way, you notice Roman thinking something to himself. What do you do? <sighs> so, that's happening, and uh, I am, uh, as we're sitting on the horses, not going too quickly now uh, mostly trotting along I I try to put pressure on my wounds but I think we need a place to sit down and address this properly if we're gonna keep on going especially considering we'll be fighting wolves but uh, yeah I'm uh, I'm trying to at least keep bleeding from proceeding yes of course seeing that you know you are bleeding seeing the injuries i move up and i and i cure your wounds i um, hold forth my amulet of lathander and um, i channel divinity i cast cure wounds and i bring you back to full health and you feel the restoration and it does feel good, Roshek. Although, of course, Roman, you feel a bit more tired. You can, after all, not do this too many times. And almost at your thoughts, Roshek, of needing rest soon, needing some refuge, you just hear the sound of wolves nearby and look around you and see things in the forest waiting. And you know there will be no rest no rest to the castle and you ride into the night leaving a small flickering fire behind of the town of Valakai You have listened to an episode of Red Moon Roleplaying where we play the campaign Curse of Strahd for Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition Curse of Strahd was designed by Christopher Perkins and based on the adventure Ravenloft, written by Tracy and Laura Hickman in 1983. Dungeons and Dragons is published by Wizards of the Coast. The music is created by Metatron Omega, Flowers for Body Snatchers and Word Clock and is used with permission from their label Cryo Chamber. 
visit cryochamber.bandcamp.com or their YouTube channel for more tasty dark ambient. A new episode of Red Moon Roleplaying is released every Friday. Please like our Facebook page and give us feedback, comments and input there. You can also visit us at redmoonroleplaying.com. Finally, a huge thank you to our growing base of supporters. You are truly amazing and inspire us so much to keep going with the show. If you haven't yet found us on Patreon, please have a look at the links in the description and see if you want to show your appreciation and encourage our work with the show there. While the show will always be free of charge to our listeners, Patreon supporters have access to extra material such as our bonus Q&A podcast, Ask for the Moon, where we discuss all topics and questions our Patreons have for us. You can even get access to the full-length, raw and unedited versions of our gaming sessions way before they are released as finished episodes. Thank you for listening. Looking forward to meeting again next week.